Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Woo, I just ate a lot of garlic. Good morning. I don't know. I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do garlic toast. Yeah, I'm just going to do this day right. Keep all the vampires away from me. (laughs) So we made it to Friday. Oh my God. What a week. What a week. I'm like happy to see Friday. Um, but um kind of not happy too cuz then like we have all the weekend doings. Okay, just side note, I'm looking out of my window and I see a baby groundhog. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, I see a baby groundhog. I should probably go chase it out of the yard. <laughs> but we got work to do, y'all. We got work to do. So, <clears throat> We have a law of the universe, and then we're going to pull some oracle cards. Surprise, surprise. That's what we do every day right now. But we're almost halfway through. We're like getting almost to the halfway point with the universal laws. And I'm really glad that we're doing it. I am. I am. I am so glad that we are doing the universal laws because, I mean, certainly I could understand life and my life a little bit better and, uh, yeah, because right now my life makes me want to drink beer and uh, put my forehead in my hand and like just shake my head, you know? <laughs> so yesterday was the law of justice. Um, on my little notepad, I wrote, upholds creation, spontaneous for people of God realization. They have banished forever all I was going to say twatting, but I think it's thwarting. I can't read my own writing. Thwarting cross currents of ego. (laughs) You twat. (laughs) Um, And then I wrote universe conspires retribution. Yeah, I can hardly read my writing. I was, I guess, rushing through it. But, okay, that was yesterday. And then today, oh my God, you guys. I just looked at the page. We're doing the law of karma today. And, uh... It's like a full page here and it, stop it. It's like two pages long. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's quit. We, You know what? 45 universal laws will probably be enough for us. Um, we're good. We're good with that. We're just going to light this packet of pages that I printed off the internet. We'll just light it on fire. And, uh, oh my God, I think I might have to go eat a banana. So I have some stamina to get through this big, big law we're going to do today. And then Monday, we're going to start with smaller laws. Do you want to know what we're doing next week? Maybe that'll be encouragement for you to come back. We're going to, next week, we're going to do the law of knowledge, the law of Lotus, the law of love, the law of lower four and the law of magnetic control. So that sounds interesting. I needed to read that for myself, so maybe I would come back. Maybe I will come back Monday if I survive the weekend and um, all my projects and decisions and maybe turning of events that could take place this weekend. So I think I'm glad that we're doing the law of karma today. So uh, I'm going to drink some dandelion root tea and we will do the law of karma. Like I ain't joking you after I eat a banana. All right, banana's done. I said it was for endurance, but it really actually was just to help get the garlic taste out of my mouth. Like, dang, I really put the garlic on. (laughs) All right, so the law of karma, get comfy. This is the natural principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. 
Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. It is ever at work with chains of causations and effects that govern all of life and manifested matter. If a person was to follow each chain link of causation, it would be found that it has its beginnings, beginning and endings in the non-material realm, the realm of spirit. It affects the throwing of dice on a gambling table or a rock slide that is caused by rain and wind. Each can be followed and understood to the observing mind, which sees the cycles in all things and realizes that all things follow the great law. The law itself is elusive and cannot be proven other than observed with the mind and is used to determine the causations and effects of any event. When this law is used with conscious effort, desired results can be produced in a person's life by steering him or herself along definite paths of causation. When the law is used in an unconscious and haphazard mind, the effects could become potentially disastrous for the individual or group of individuals. So-called, quote, accidents could occur without warning to individuals who toil through life without awareness. We are responsible for the very thoughts that we produce and the final result of our own mental alchemy. Fear is one of the most dangerous mental causation that prevents a person from thinking and acting as the higher self would prefer. The cause of fear is the result of a lack of knowledge about the unknown God, which should be the most important educational journey in a person's life. The causation of fear can only be removed through knowledge, wisdom, and understanding universal law, the reality that we live in order to produce the desired effects in our lives. The greatest evil under the sun, according to Hermes Toth, is not knowing God. In every minute, thought, action, and deed that is performed, a person sets into motion unseen chains of causations and effects which will vibrate from the mental plane throughout the entire cellular structure of the body, out into the environment, and finally into the cosmos. Eventually, the vibratory energy returns to its originator upon the return swing of the pendulum. All this in less time than a twinkling of an eye. Because there are seven dimensions of reality in which causations can occur, we remain unaware of many reasons for effects. By understanding universal laws, we can learn to operate in grace instead of accumulating karma. In parentheses, it says restrictive. This law is mechanically or mathematically operative. Its workings may be scientifically manipulated by men and women of divine wisdom. In parentheses, it says fully realized. All right, guys, hang on. We're almost, we're almost there. <laughs> okay, the karmic law requires that every human wish find ultimate fulfillment. Therefore, desire is the chain that binds man to the reincarnational wheel. Karma is only, is attracted only where the magnet of the personal ego still exists. An understanding of karma as the law of justice underlying life's inequalities 
serves to free the human mind from resentment against God and man. Are you still here? <laughs> we did it. That's the law of karma. All right, karma is only track attracted only where the magnet of the personal ego exists. So like yesterday it said about us getting rid of all that backlash of the ego, right? Um, maybe you actually really can escape the wheel, the turning wheel of karma. Okay, but that was a pretty good explanation of all that. Um, yeah, that's the law of karma. What do I, I'm not repeat. I'm not going back. I get it. Do you get it? I got it. If you don't get it, rewind. Listen to it again. But it basically, it's like happening all the time, whether we realize it or not. But if we can realize it, we can start to manipulate it to our to our advantage, right? Just be aware of the junk that you are spewing out in your mind. Oh my God. It sucks when you realize you've attracted all the craziness in your life, but it's true. <laughs> like all the time, I'm like, oh, I did this. I did this. I did this too. I brought all this on me. Here it is. I did it. All right, so there's that. All right, I'm going to put that in the drawer. That's the law of karma. I have three decks. I have three decks to help us explain um, maybe a little bit of what we've attracted in our life and uh, see what's going on. Let me tell you all about them. Okay, so I have the Earth Magic deck, the Power of Flowers, that's the one that uses flower essences, and then the Herbal Healing deck. And I think I'm just going to do like a nine, I'm going to do a nine patch square. <laughs> um, and just get like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, maybe. Um, we'll see. That's my plan. A lot of times what I plan isn't what's what's hap what's happens <laughs> but that's because I'm open to things happening in a better way I really am um, I don't really want to be limited by my own expectations because I know things can work out better than even what I can imagine but that's what I'm gonna do I'll get get these decks out I'll give them a shuffle I'll pick a few cards from each one and then we'll just see if there's any um, anything lines up or correlates um, how is the law, how are you utilizing the law of karma? How's that working out for you? Oh my gosh, like yesterday, I was like such a draining day. Um, I had, we took our daughter to the doctor because her lips have been swollen and a rash. Yeah, this thing that's been going on for like three weeks. Um, I, you know, I couldn't figure it out on my own. So what the doctor thinks is that she is, um, having like a reaction to acidic foods like citruses, pickles, vinegars, tomatoes, you know, oranges, things like that. And uh, so anyways, it sucks so bad. Like um, she has to do like five days of prednisone and it's making her like, of course, so weird. And I, it's not what I would ever want to do, but it needs to be gotten under control. But anyways, ugh. I think I just feel so exhausted from that yesterday because I despise going to see any doctor, um, but it was necessary. But then as we're talking about the law of karma, it's like, you know, it's like, how did this, you try to figure out like, how did this come about? You know, like what was the causation of this? And I don't know, kind of interesting, but what got me started on that? I don't know. <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking, feeling how like tired I was and I'm like, yeah, that's because yesterday your day was shit. <laughs> this whole week has been shit, totally. But uh, so let's get a few, few cards, explain karma, explain the shit week, explain why we create the things that we create. All right, earth magic. And that's really where I need to be. I need to be outside. I need to be away from my device. I need to... Um, yeah, just connect with nature. All right, so the first card that's popping up from this deck is Winter Solstice, which is reflection. Um, that's what we're doing, man. I'm re we're reflecting how we got um, into this soup pot. How did, how did this come about, right? So yeah, this reflection time, like sometimes things happen like too fast and it's like, 
now you're like in the middle of something that seems a little bit overwhelming but the next card that's popping up is new moon with promise and it's an image of a couple sitting um, by a waterfront watching the sun go down and it's just saying that like you know what everything that's been promised to you or that you've asked for is set into motion and it is coming to you right so first we have the reflection which is like this winter scene on a lake with some white birch trees being reflected into the pond's water and it's really pretty kind of a darker like a nighttime feel to it um, and then we so we have winter solstice new moon so these are both kind of comforting um, earth scenes too when you think about like when things do get overwhelming it would just be nice to have a nice dark night or calm winter's walk in the snow or something like that like just to cool down the momentum that's rolling on in your life or you know piling up however you want to do it the karmic wheel keeps turning keeps on turning and it's just like oh both of these scenes are of of a, are of of I don't know why I want to put two ofs there, but they are of of a slowing down. A slowing down and taking time to reflect. And yeah, it's so sweet to see um, these two people embracing each other, looking at the sunset together. You know, I, I think that's sweet. All right, let's get another one. Let's get another one from the Earth Magic. Earth magic. Let us see. Do you have one more card for us? Ooh. No, she's got two cards for us. The cloud the clouds and Gaia. Okay, so the deck split apart and um the clouds and Gaia are here. So the clouds are all about shape-shifting and Gaia is about nurturing so yeah that's what I was just saying I feel like I need to be outside I guess we're gonna do four cards not three um, I need to be outside and being held right like if you don't have a lover to hold you in front of the sunset could just go outside Gaia will hold you Gaia energetically holds you anytime you're outside in the grass, in the forest, amongst the trees, in the gardens, like you're energetically held. That's why it feels so good to be outside. That's why you love to take walks in the woods, you know, because guy is there with you, nurturing you. But I love that like the clouds came through because they have a message of shape shifting. And it's like, you know what? You can be whoever you need to be in the moment, wherever you are. Like, whatever you need to do, you can do it. And if you need to be one person one day and then a different person the next, like yesterday when I had to take my daughter to the um, doctors, like, I even dressed different. Like, I, I put on, like, I was so mom. I was so mom yesterday. I didn't even, I don't even know if I liked it. <laughs> like, I had, like, my Jennifer Aniston khaki green shorts on like I look like I could have walked out of an episode of friends and I had like a knitted crocheted shirt on I mean I looked nice and respectable now today I have like comfy like a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt over top of it like I just look like I maybe like woke up from like an overnight hippie party or something <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's funny how we shapeshift. Like, why didn't I wear this outfit yesterday? How come I never put that those clothes on if I'm just at, at the house? It's like, who the fuck am I really? You know, like, sometimes I think that's why this card came through. Because even yesterday, I was like, I don't even know who I am sometimes. I just am playing all these different roles, you know? So, yeah, it's like, what... Like, like, does this sit, stick with clothes? It's like, well, what clothes do you really feel like you are you? Because um, it's interesting, like, if I get, like, really comfortable in an outfit, I wear it all the time. And, um, like, my kids were actually making fun of me. They are like, oh, my, they are like, the Yvette shirt again. Because I have my friend Yvette from Yvette Lepley Pottery gave me a shirt. And I, like, I kind of 
I manipulated a shirt. I I made it into a tank top and I sewed it so it would fit my body. And because um, t-shirts are always so big and I'm pretty small. And uh, so yeah, like it, it's really, it fits like a glove. And uh, I wear it all the time and like with these like pants, I can wear it with a pair of pants or I have a skirt. So like I have like, you know, two different things to wear it with. So it seems like I wear this shirt all the time. Because I do. <laughs> But my point is, I, I don't know, like, I feel like me in that shirt, you know? So it's kind of, like, wardrobe is an interesting topic. Like, like sometimes I get annoyed with it. It's like, well, why do I have these clothes that, like, I don't feel like me? But, like, I feel like I need them every once in a while to shape shift into different roles. Or, you know, that's just one example of shape shifting. Like, we can do this with our personality or with our words or um, I think one time I did a podcast at Herbal Marie. Um, I think it was like, you can talk herb to anybody. And it was just like talking about the different ways that we can talk about herbs. <laughs> right? We have different dialects. Like sometimes, I mean, sometimes we can, you know, talk differently to different people. I mean, it's just weird how much shape-shifting goes on in our own personal life. But it like kind of makes me think to myself, like with the Winter Solstice Reflection card... It's like, okay, but after you take off all the clothes and you shut the F up and you quit talking and using your personality, who are you truly? Like, what is that true, true, true energy underneath your skin, underneath your mind, you know? And it's like, that is the energy that we need to get more in touch with. And how do we do that? We go in the woods. We take time to enjoy the sunset. We just allow nature to nurture. And, um, yeah. And then take, just, just take some comfort. Take some solace in, in, in the fact that, like, everything that has been promised to us will get to us. Like, the universe will deliver everything that is meant for you or a vibrational match to you. Or that you have, since we're doing the law of karma today, or that you have summoned with your with um, your actions and stuff. So it's all coming back to you, bitch. You reap what you sow. <laughs> no, so sad. <laughs> it's all coming back. All right. So we're just gonna we're just going over the surface of these for right now. Let's pull out the power of flowers. And uh, see, let me work in that, organize here. Let me put the Earth Magic deck away. I have a little pendant that lives in this box. It's of a little goddess. And uh, yeah, I think that's like an, I, I'm meant to see that too because it's like, well, who are you? Like, just connect to that goddess energy within and always make sure you're always feeling comfortable um, as yourself. And if you're not, then take notice and, you know, if you're not comfortable in an outfit or a situation or with a certain person or in a specific conversation, it's like, change it. Get out of it and change it. And donate it. Donate it to Goodwill. <laughs> donate that friend, that conversation to Goodwill. Like, get it out. Um, yeah, because you don't need to, to shape shift into something you're not like shape shift into who you truly are all right but it's nice to know that we do have that ability to shape shift and get things done if we need to i can't wait till the weather cools down because my favorite outfit is blue jeans and my boots <laughs> it's like like that's that sometimes that sucks too like whenever you're like used to an outfit and you're like but now it's too hot to wear it <laughs> all right so oh under winter solstice we have bleeding heart so yeah this is like a message like um i'll just you know get back to my life like i feel so just kind of done with love do you know what i mean but yet a broken heart is an open heart and it's like yes but it's your nature to give and receive love all the time so there definitely is a lot of reflection though when it comes in the realms of love. All right, let's see what the new moon promise, 
Let's just see what's in the realm of these cards. The earth magic is setting the tone and, oh, this one fell out. New moon promise, let's see what comes with that one, is coming in with alchemy. All right, well, the alchemy card in this deck actually is, um, I'm supposed to pick a card out now. So my next card I have to pick out with something that resonates. All right, so so yeah, that's the rules of this card, this deck. I'm distracted, sorry. Um, if you get the alchemy card, you have to go through and visually pick out a card that resonates. Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm gonna pick Calla Lily. And we just got Calla Lily yesterday, didn't we? All right, so for the next card, is it's Calla Lily, I guess. So shape-shifting now. No, wait a second. That would come with this card. It would be under the New Moon Promise. All right, so this merely is not gonna make my deck or my layout any nicer. So Alchemy said pick a card. Well, I picked Calla Lily, which is actually another group of lovers. So let me see how I want to put this. All right, so now that goes below it. So much for my tidy, my tidy layout today. <clears throat> so this New Moon Promise, we're going to look more into that because... Yeah, the Calla Lily with these two lovers getting ready to kiss was the card that I scrolled through and that's the one that spoke to me the most. Um, so it's like, what kind of alchemy are we bringing in for ourselves? Okay, let's see here. Is there anything else from this deck? <laughs> that moment where I forget that I'm doing a podcast. Okay, here we go. All right, so under shape-shifting clouds, we got Manzanita, which is a really interesting tree, and there is the big goddess statue in front of it. So this shape-shifting thing has something to do with our, of course, our appearance, what we think of it, and um, if we, I feel like there's a message, like if we don't have a positive perception or opinion of our body the way it is this is something that we need to work on healing of course but also shape-shifting ourselves into a space that we love ourselves a wee bit more and then our last card is under Gaia is California poppy and this is inviting the fairy realm into our space so it's like please go outside and connect with your fairy friends like they are out there and they miss you because you have been so stupidly distracted about everything I mean that's their words not mine <laughs> but to them it is stupid it is stupid that we are like worrying about things and we're stressing about things and we're not having fun and we're not letting ourselves be free and we're picking on ourselves about our body and you know we're getting all junked up about love when we should just be loving and having fun and you know we're just wallowing in the bleeding heart we're wallowing way too much and they're like please just come outside and play and feel better just come outside and play with us you know and then everything else can kind of work itself you know how it is all right so let's see here i am going to move the alchemy card up a wee bit oh so funny like i was like let's do a nice tidy spread and then spreads like no screw you <laughs> alchemy card comes in is like nah Nah, let's not. 
Okay, so we'll do that. All right, let me grab my last deck. All right, so I hope you're drinking and eating or doing the dishes or something while I'm flubbering around with all these decks. I don't know. I didn't realize the Law of Karma was going to be so long. <laughs> the Law of Karma was so long, and now I'm, like, just doing a really long um, kind of layout for me. But I kind of want to know, like, you know, it is the weekend, and it's like, we are looking, we could do a little weekend forecast here with this last row. Um, so with our themes of reflection and promise and shape-shifting and nurturing, let's see what herbs come through. So let me give it another shuffle. And uh, we'll just kind of put them down in the column. <clears throat> but if, this, if these cards want to like give us a little insight on what to do with these themes, that would be cool. So we have Winter Solace, Reflection, and below it is the Bleeding Heart. Um, it's a man, half horse, half man in the forest, and he's kind of just by the water looking sad, but he has a light behind him, but he can't really see it because he's too sad. Um, underneath him is Mugwort. So this is all about cycles. So the heartbreak cycle, it will come to an end, as does winter, right? Winter does not last forever, neither will the feeling of a broken heart, um, neither will the feeling of disappointment. Like all things, if you allow them, will finish their cycle and something new will come up and that's what the next column is the new moon promise um and that comes there's a lot of promises with love in our life um and that's why we got the calla lily and it's all about alchemy like what are you gonna make of it <laughs> what do you want to do with it so this next card is all about like what do we want to do with love what do we how do we want to create it more in our life and we have nettle, which is receiving. <clears throat> As I choke to my death. <laughs> like if somebody wants to love you, will you receive it? Will you allow it? Will you let it happen? Will you accept the gift of love? Will you take the kiss? Will you accept the embrace right so nettle is all about receiving um because yeah a lot of times that's what it is that's why we don't have it we're not letting it in we're not receiving it um and uh nettle's coming in <laughs> oh god that's so funny because i when i was on um the time in the studio podcast i was interviewed on that not too long ago be sure to check it out time in the studio like time like the herb she asked me like um what was the question like what plant i identified with like if i was an herb which herb would i be and without even like i mean it was just it just sput out of my mouth i just said stinging nettle <laughs> you know <laughs> and of course she was like laughing because she thought it'd be like motherwort you know because i love motherwort it made such a difference in my life but no it's like when it comes to me who I am in my life right now. No, I'm stinging nettle. I'm very nourishing. I'll give you everything you need. But it's like when you try to hug me, like, I don't know. Do, do I have prickly things on me? It almost seems like that. Like, it's just, I don't always receive the love. So that's interesting. That is interesting that this came through. So it's like the love is being given here that I see really the alchemy is there the chemistry is there like it is ripe and ready and prime but will you accept it will you will you allow yourself to think that you're worthy because see the next column is with the clouds and the shape-shifting and the manzanita and the body image it's like why do we let our low self-esteem or you know our issues with our body or even like like today, like I, I just ate like a whole clove of garlic. So like it, if somebody would want to kiss me now, I maybe for their own good, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's for their own good, but I'm probably like, no, you may want to wait. Cause like I smell like a garlic bulb right now, 
You know, it's like we're always too self-conscious of our body and of the way we look and smell and taste. And it's like, good Lord, like just get over it already, you know? Like not everybody likes garlic, that's fine, but there's probably somebody out there who loves garlic, <laughs> would want to eat you up, you know? But, um, and it's like, yeah, maybe the same thing with our bodies. Like you might look a certain way and think, oh, well, that person won't like me because I'm, I'm too this or that. I'm too skinny or I'm too thick or I'm too, you know what I mean? Or I'm too blonde or I'm too dark haired. Like it, there is like no end to the, the lack of confidence that could come in. And it's like, okay, yeah, maybe that person doesn't like your, your skinny ass, but that person would, you know? And that's just physical things, but it's like, it can go with personality too. Like, you don't need to change yourself for anybody. Just be you. And they either like it or they don't. And if they don't, it's not a real big deal. But the big deal is, are you liking you? Do you like you? Or are you just always hiding your true self and shape-shifting into something you're not um, when, like, there really is, like, just this beauty that could be experienced within you if you just allow yourself to be yourself? And if you don't know who that is at this point because you've been changing and shape-shifting and accommodating to everyone else's mold that they would like to put you in, then it's time to take some time and and get to know who you truly are. So yeah, let's see what that, let's see what herb comes in on that note um, with, you know, the image and the clouds. And you know what's really interesting? The clouds now look like the manzanita shape. Like, it seems like there's this, and what is that, the goddess of Willendorf or something? Like, she just has like a honeycomb looking head and she's got like, She's real big and and she's got big breasts and a belly and her thighs like she was the goddess, right? Like <laughs> like I don't relate at all, <laughs> you know? But like um that is what the cloud looks like too now that I look at it like she's laying and she's got all these curves and she's just like being herself, you know? Um so it's like yeah, like you have got to love yourself no matter what. Like, whether you're a big curvy girl or a stick like me. It's like, we we both are, we're polar opposites, but we're challenged with the same bullshit of accepting ourselves the way we are. So the herb that came through is moonflower with death and rebirth. So it's like, yeah, it's time to let that old opinion of yourself die. Those, those insecurities, um, let them go. Because you need to be reborn into a person who loves himself completely, 100%, and doesn't really give a rip what anyone else thinks. Um, not like in a rude, sassy way, but it's just like you've stopped looking outside of yourself for any type of confirmation or validation or anything like that. So yeah, I love that moonflower has come in because it's like, yeah, like especially that now we have, we had mugwort, you know, with cycles and it's like this cycle of, you know, whatever darkness that you've been feeling or heartache or relationship sadness, it's like it really could, could be done now. And something new could really be born. But the thing is, it's like you have to be reborn first into your new, expanded, beautiful you. You're more aware, more self-loving, more wise you. So I love that. Okay, so, so it's like, yeah, like the fairies and Gaia have just been waiting this whole time to be like, okay, good. Like now are you going to come out now that you love yourself? Can you come outside and play? <laughs> but they're saying, even if you are totally aware of how much work you need to do in this arena, still come outside. Cause we are going to hold beautiful space for you. We are going to hold the right environment to tune you and to remind you that your nature, 
you are nature like like a lilac bush does not compare itself with a maple tree right and neither of those guys compare themselves to a little clover flower right or self-heal like look think of flowers they're all so different but they just all bloom the same right they don't the tulip doesn't get all upset because it's not a rose it just bees the tulip you know everything in nature is just being its authentic self and it's like if you've gotten away from understanding that you're nature which everyone has then you're just not letting yourself be who you are you know and it's like yeah it's because and we know why because you know society manipulates us to look a certain way do our hair a certain way wear different clothes you know like they even make you feel like I was even saying making me feel guilty about wearing the same clothes all the time you know but it's like so there's so many different ways to manipulate ourselves that that it almost has gotten out of control that it's like yeah like now you don't even know who you truly are because you know one day you can be this and you can be that then you can have all these different things going on and it's like you've forgotten your true state how you would be in nature naturally you know um so that's an interesting concept to go to go on all right so let's see let, let's get our last card here this is for our last column with gaia and the fairies in california poppy okay we're gonna completely break up the deck all right let's see here this is for the fairies and gaia and getting to know ourselves as nature and who we truly are and not caring what other people think about us and not tr and even more importantly first off not trying anymore to change ourselves to be different it's like so what if you enjoy being the way you're you are then be it be it all right so we're ending with oak which is strength but I wanna just say that on the bottom is Rose <laughs> with an open heart. So that's interesting. I feel like our card is actually Rose, but strength is coming through too, making my ears have this high pitch whistle because it, it wants us to know that like you actually don't realize how how much strength it truly takes for you just to be yourself. And it takes so much strength um, to stand up for Gaia, stand up for nature, to go out on a, to actually say out loud that you believe in fairies, you know, like it takes a strong person to do that because you're instantly going to be ridiculed. Like environmentalists, they're instantly trying to, I mean, like people that are in oil business and it's like they want to take out the environmentalists right away. So as soon as you speak out for the earth, a lot of times you know, your target then are people just, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it takes a lot of strength to, to say that you love the earth, that you love Gaia, that nature speaks to you. Oh, that's a big one. Because as soon as you start telling people that nature speaks to you, they're like, whoop she batshit crazy <laughs> right he's nuts he's nuts if he takes a walk and can feel the messages of the trees but you know I think so I think that's really important um to just stay strong to stay strong and uh really radiate out your personal will your personal power um, that's how the oak is. There is an infinity sign in his third eye area and his solar plexus is lit up. And then this all came, all this strength and wisdom and energy and solidness, solidness, Jesus, solidness came from one tiny acorn. So it's like one tiny acorn made this massive incredible tree and even like moonflower is putting down her seeds when i look over moonflower is dropping a seed and it's lighted up in the soil nettle has this amazing geometric 
symbol underneath her, right? Um, so it's like this strength is coming from Gaia. This strength is coming from within. So we really need to think about going outside, getting in nature, and and um, planting our energetic roots and our seeds into the earth and just allowing things to unfold naturally, allowing things to cycle out um, and allow ourselves to get in a better receiving mode. And how do we do that? Well, that's the card that I'm holding in my hand. Rose, open heart. We need to open it up. <clears throat> we really, really, really do. So I'm actually, because I'm on the edge of the table, I'm running out of room. <laughs> I'm gonna move you over and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put rose over here by bleeding heart and cycles. So we are finishing a cycle of a closed hearted darkness. We really are. We are, humanity is, society is, the earth, you know, and we're all doing this on our beautiful earth. The earth is finishing a cycle herself. It's like there's so much energy and alchemy right now all these new moons in our life like now is the time to plant new seeds now is the time to turn over a new leaf now is the time to connect with our heart space with our loved ones with nature with the fairies and with the earth now is the time to take your ability to shape shift and shapeshift into the goddess god that you truly are. Shapeshift into the beautiful human that dwells within you, that is natural to you. And um, yeah, just use your energy now to release yourself from a lot of the old programs that you have within you, your limiting belief systems, your self-hate, release that right so there is this big message of being in reflection right now really understanding as the law of karma said why this was set into motion understand the causations understand the lessons understand you know understand the energy to it so that you can grow and expand and not do this shit again right <laughs> So just take a lot of comfort knowing, like Mugwort says, it's all just cycles and you know, you're know you gonna get through it. Um, how are you gonna get through it? With that open heart. Keep that heart open for your reflection, for your healing, for your connection with others. It really can be so beautiful as long as you want to receive it. But you've gotta let go of the old. You've gotta let some stuff die. You've got to release yourself from the boxes that you keep putting yourself in. It's time to be free. It's time to love yourself unconditionally. <clears throat> and it's time to return to the earth. So on that note, I think it's just such a great message for us to feel the strength of Gaia that she gives to us all the time and you know connect with nature and the fairies are waiting for us they really are so i love so much that it was california poppy you know that too to me is like just kind of like hey relax california poppy is relaxing like relax into this relax into this knowingness of who you truly are have some fun with it like don't take everything so seriously just have a good time, you know, and see what transpires um, and don't be so super rigid. But be strong enough to know your boundaries and to know when to say no and to know when to let something go. You know, if it's just not working for you anymore, let it go. Um, and don't put yourself in situations that are uncomfortable, you know? And if you find yourself in there, the clouds are like, yo, just shape shift yo ass straight out of here into something better. So this really is a beautiful time for us to shape shift into our authentic selves. And the law of karma says, yo, like, 
that's awesome. Learn your lessons and uh, understand why this is the way it is and how you can use energy to help you do just that. So yeah, shape shifting into our authentic selves. It's like be who you truly are, love who you truly are. That will give you the perfect space within you to open your heart, connect with others, and yeah, just have so much lighthearted fun. It's time to shine. It, but it is time first to detoxify and become who you truly are. So de- detoxify yourself of any negativities or you know things that are just bringing you down and not letting you be who you truly are. And who you truly are is a lover, um, a lover of this earth, a lover of life. And yeah, just a lover of love. That's what you are. So open your heart let it in, receive it, give it, receive it, give it, just let, let it all naturally ebb and flow in and out of your life. Everything is cycles, so it's like nothing really lasts forever, it's all gonna change, right? Different clouds every day, different experiences, different thoughts, different perspectives, but, you know, let it serve you, let it allow you to become a bigger, better, more wholesome, more integrated, multi-dimensional version of yourself. So yeah, for that, with all these cards, I would say that's what I'm left with. Shape shift into your authentic self. It's time for you to be you. It is time for you to be you and just allow that type of energy to set the energy into in your life in motion. So yeah, more love, more love, more love, more fun, more fun, more fun, and more accepting and self-love and connection with nature when it's all said and done. So yeah, don't even wait until till lunch. Go outside now and start let, letting nature tune you and be outside as much as you can all weekend and let's just see where that puts us Monday morning. All right, y'all. I'll see you then. Much love.